Okay, today's gonna be an interesting one. I originally had planned on doing a normal style video, but upon further research into one of my stories, I had to ax it. And with that, I didn't have enough time to do said normal video, so I'm having to do a talking head. But we've still got some really interesting stories, starting with AM5 Plus. Intel just made their GPUs better, the new CPU competitor gets a ton of benchmarks, and AMD just leaked their own RX 8000 GPU. You. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, we actually got some interesting new information for an update to the MC Extractor. For those that don't know, the MC Extractor is basically a tool that parses Intel and AMD binaries. Anyway, within that, we actually got news that, well, for one, it adds two new AMD CPUs. These are obviously being Ryzen 9000 CPUs, but it's actually not the most interesting part. You can see here that they actually add AM5 Plus. And of course, that does sound a little bit odd given the fact that AM5 was promised until 2025 plus. So what I'm thinking is that this is not a new socket, especially given, you know, a new socket would likely be called AM6. This is coming way too early. I'm thinking that this is basically the exact same socket, but it just comes with new features. Although what those features might be could be pretty exciting given the fact that during AM4's timeline, they actually added support for PCI Express 4.0 through the AM4 timeline. And they didn't even call that anything like AM4 Plus. So I do vaguely remember, I will say that there was talk about something like some kind of AM4 Plus, something along those lines, but it didn't end up happening. But at least for now, it looks like that may be the case for AM5. Either way, I wouldn't get too worried about this being some new socket or anything like that. Once again, it would likely be called AM6, and there's no reason for them to update the socket, especially when they promised 2025 plus. But first, today, for free, you can join the only place I trust to learn computer science with this video sponsor. Brilliant! All you have to do is visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld to get your free trial. But let me tell you what it's all about. See, Brilliant was built from the ground up to teach the STEM field, and because of that, you know they teach you the right stuff. But it's really not even what they teach you. Sure, they have tons of courses about pretty much anything you could want, but it's more about how they teach you. Whether it's learning how AI works to playing around with capacitors, Brilliant teaches you by getting you to do it yourself. It's how most people like to learn, including me. And they're constantly updating courses and adding new ones, so even if you've tried it out before, this is the perfect perfect time to come back especially because Brilliant is offering my viewers a 30-day free trial when you visit Brilliant.org slash GamerMeld. Plus, when you sign up at Brilliant.org slash GamerMeld, you'll get 20% off their premium membership for life. Once again, that's Brilliant.org slash GamerMeld. And next up for today, Intel just updated their super resolution tech, XESS, now calling it XESS 1.3. Now, don't let that seemingly minor change in name make you think that this isn't a big update. In fact, it actually is. Skipping past all the performance stuff, first, one of the interesting things that they did is that, well, they optimize the AI in this. You can see in this example right here before, you can see it's ghosting, acting really weird, but now it's pretty much normal. There are still a couple issues happening right here. You can see it, but nothing like before. Not only that, but they also added a few new presets. These being Ultra Performance, Ultra Quality Plus, and an all new native anti-aliasing setting. And down here, you can actually see the performance comparison. Clearly, this gives you a ton more options for where you want your performance to be. And what's interesting is that because this update also adds performance, which I'll get to in just a second, but even using their Ultra Quality Plus, which is clearly a better quality preset than regular Ultra Quality, it's still right around the same performance. And when we look at, say, performance, it goes from 66 to 71, even though that's the same preset. So it doesn't just look better, there's still a performance uplift. And you can see that right here, we're not looking at a huge uplift, but obviously a few FPS is still pretty nice. We're talking 50 to 56, 57, 63, 83 to 87. Once again, nothing huge, but this is still free performance. 
And next up, I just really quickly wanted to touch on this. There were some stories going around that the 4090D from NVIDIA, as well as their AI GPUs, made specifically to get around the U.S. sanctions to China. There was a chance that these were now going to be axed as well. But fortunately, they have been updated, most of these stories. But I just want to make sure if you saw this early on, you can see NVIDIA says that they followed up with official statement and confirmed that the app restrictions have no impact on the H20 or the RTX 4090D GPUs. So for anyone in China who's a little bit concerned about that, which is understandable, don't be. And next up, I know I've been talking about this a lot, but this is a really awesome story. Qualcomm's upcoming Snapdragon X Elite chips, which if you've been following the channel, you know are going to be coming in Windows notebooks. Well, a bunch of media actually got a chance to head down to New York and put it through its paces. Now, I will say that the notebooks came with pre-installed benchmarks, and these are the benchmarks that they were testing out and playing around with, but still, this should give us a very good idea of the performance we can expect. Anyway, they also had a presentation, and they did go over said performance. As you can see right here, starting things off, you can see they claim Snapdragon X Elite beats the M3 in multi-threaded performance. This is a single Geekbench 6, I believe it is, benchmark. So not too much information here. But when we move on, we can see this right here is multi-core performance comparing it to Intel's Core Ultra 9 185H. And as you can see, according to this, it gets up to 41% faster CPU performance versus the competition at basically the same power level. But it's also able to match their peak PC performance at 58% less power. And don't forget, obviously, these are notebooks. Now, really quickly before I get to this next slide in just a second, also, they apparently crush it in GPU performance, up to 36% faster GPU performance with the same ISO power, and then it matches competitor peak PC performance at 50% less power. Now, I will say that I'd much rather see this versus AMD's APU, but of course, remember that at least for notebooks, Intel just completely dominates the field, so it is at least somewhat understandable as to why they're comparing these, but still, I would love to see a comparison versus AMD's notebook APUs. Either way, because of the awesome performance per watt, they claim that in Office 365 apps, you can get upwards of 40% longer battery life with the Snapdragon X Elite compared to the Intel Core Ultra 7 than with local video playback, 43% longer battery life, web browsing, 58% longer, YouTube streaming, 89% longer, Teams video calls, over two times longer battery life. Now, obviously, this is something that is really hard to strictly quantified just because it obviously depends on how big the battery is in the notebook all of these different factors i assume that they are taking those out when doing these comparisons but if this is right this is really impressive and for more exact figures they also shared some performance numbers in benchmarks now we have right here this is paired with 16 gigabytes of ram and this one with 64 gigabytes and you can see just as a quick comparison with multi third performance in Cinebench 2024 gets between 1140 to 1200 and then with 16 gigabytes of RAM it gets between 920 and 980 and when we compare this to AMD's APU we can see this right here is the 8945HS and in Cinebench 2024, it gets 934 points. So it's right in line with both AMD and Intel's best CPUs. This really is looking like an awesome release. And lastly for today, AMD just leaked their own RX 8000 GPUs. As you can see right here, it says NV48, not to be mistaken with the 20 year old NVIDIA NV48 GPU, is a short code for AMD's Navi 48. This is the GPU, at least according to rumors, it's set to be in the top end RX 8000 card. Either way, as you can see right here in the GitHub for AMD's ROCM, they actually added a patch that adds support for Navi 48, basically confirming that this rumored GPU is in fact a thing. Don't forget that as far as specs, we're expecting the Navi 48 to feature 32 workgroup processors. So once again, this isn't going to be competing with Nvidia's highest end GPU or anything like that. AMD really clearly seems to be strictly working at the upper to mid range of GPUs. But once again, this is still interesting just because AMD has done some really awesome stuff when they only 
released mid-range GPUs before, they're a lot of times able to really compete at price to performance. And honestly, I do think that's something that's sorely needed in the market right now. So while that does it for today, are you excited for AMD's RX 8000 GPUs or are you just disappointed that they're not competing on the high end? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day.